Welcome to Meet the Artist. I'm this month's guest host, Sarah Petrozello, and with me is Nettie Thomas, a board member at 1978 Maplewood Arts Center, to talk about this month's Black History Month show, Emma Amos. The full title is? Emma Amos, Looking, Learning, and Living. That's right. Uh, to see more about the show, you can visit the website www.1978artcenter.org. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about Emma's work and um, basically the background of, of the show. Well, Emma Amos's work is um, featured for Black History Month. It is one of the uh, Black History Month actually is the only exhibit where we feature a solo artist. And we look for artists who have national and international recognition, and Emma Amos certainly feel, fits that criteria. Her work is in major museums. She has shown internationally, and uh, she's been written up in many art books and chronicles, and she's been working a long, long time and has achieved a recognition for her work. Uh, one thing that struck me about the show, she works so much on fabric, mm -hmm. and can you talk a little bit about her medium, and I know she's painting um, on fabric and there are variations of that. Can you tell me more well, about that? Well, she actually did a print, she um, took a print workshop mm -hmm. and did a lot of printing, and she wanted to incorporate the printing on fabric with actually weaving and making her own fabric. And one of her shows, it was likened to the old tapestries mm -hmm. where you use the fabrics to tell a story. And that is what she was emulating in her work. Yeah, because for mm -hmm. a lot of the pieces, there's a painted centerpiece yes. and then the outer edge of printmaking. And mm -hmm. it's, it is like a tapestry. Yes. I was thinking it was somewhat quilt-like. But mm -hmm. you're right, the way they hang is, is more like a tapestry. What interested me was her subject matter. And there's so much of the tie to art history, and I'm I'm curious about some of the people that she selected. Um, specifically, there's an apron, which mm -hmm. I see as an artist's apron, mm -hmm. with Picasso. I mean, can you talk more about that piece? Now, she calls that my mentor, Picasso. Mm -hmm. As you know, Emma was an educator. Mm -hmm. She uh, was a professor at Rutgers Mason Gross School of the Arts. She actually started in the Newark School of Fine Industrial Art. Mm -hmm. So education has always been important to her. Mm -hmm. And she makes these historical tie-ins. She was telling me about that particular piece. Picasso she saw as a mentor, and if you look at the piece, you see the African mask that inspired mm -hmm. Picasso, and then you see some of Picasso's abstractions of this, mm -hmm. and she tied it all together. And she put it on a painter's apron because it symbolized the craft of painting. In fact, she said when she finished, she just flung the paint across it because it's an apron and artist is working on it and it should not be pristine. Yeah, it was a fabulous mm -hmm. piece. And that actually, that was exactly what I got from it because mm -hmm. when you look at it, you get the sense of tied art history. And right. I suspected that because Picasso and many of the early 20th century artists look to African art to legitimize the, the designs and, and the, the abstraction. Yeah, you saw that in so much of their work too. Uh, there's another piece there, the Paul Robeson piece, which we were talking yes. about a moment ago, but that's an interesting one, who also has ties to Rutgers, yes. so you talk about and that one. And what's interesting to me is the title. Mm -hmm. The full title is Thank Jesus for Paul Robeson, <laughs> which is, <laughs> you can take it uh, many ways uh, mm -hmm. for his prowess, his, his being an athlete, and if you look at the painting for the I would say striking male physique mm -hmm. because it is a male nude seen from the back, but it's, and it was taken after a, a photograph of Paul Robeson, I believe, around uh, the middle 1900s, or, mm -hmm. and uh, she used that and took the painting from that, and she even used a portion of a Grecian mm -hmm. frieze where you also see the male body, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like honoring the male body which she felt Paul Robeson epitomized. She did tell us the story that when she was young, <clears throat> her grandmother, or, or maybe a great aunt, took her to see Paul Robeson. 
Oh, on the, and she on the stage? Had, on the stage. Wow. And she had the opportunity to go backstage and meet him. Wow. And she said, here she was, this tiny girl looking at this statuous man, and said it was a moment <coughs> she would always remember. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. That's fascinating. Yeah, I really, I, there's another piece that's an homage, um, the name. Bill T. Jones? Yes. Yes, Bill T. Jones, he's, he's, he's still dancing. Mm -hmm. He's a uh, modern dancer. Mm -hmm. In fact, last year, I saw him perform at uh, Montclair State College, mm -hmm. and he was one of the people that she identified with. Mm -hmm. He's a fantastic dancer, kind of an older male at this time, mm -hmm. but still dancing. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. I, you know, walking and not knowing much about her background mm -hmm. before seeing the show, and then walking through and seeing individual pieces, which were each one is its own little narrative, mm -hmm. and then working around it with a story. It was really fascinating. Um, more of Emma Amos's history background, because I know she was born mm -hmm. in Atlanta in mm -hmm. the late 1930s. I should say that, but <laughs> but I was interested actually because she went to London mm -hmm. for art school, which is an interesting choice for that time. I just yes, and you know I really don't know how that came about, except that her talents were recognized at an early age. Yeah, and uh, she did study abroad, and one of the things she found when she came back to the States that um, the better jobs for artists in, on the college campuses were going to males. Mm -hmm. And so therefore she was not privy to be included. Mm -hmm. She actually started teaching at the Newark School of Fine Industrial Arts, mm -hmm. which was, um, it is no longer in existence, but it was one of the finer schools for students in art who graduated arts high school mm -hmm. or who graduated from a secondary school. And she became associated with a group that included Romar Bearden and it's called Spiral. Mm -hmm. She was the only female and she was the youngest member. And uh, she had these great, uh, you know, connections and support yeah. and that propelled her, I believe. And once she left um, North School of Industrial Arts, then she became a professor at Rutgers, and then Mason Rose. Wow! So she's had quite a she's had yeah. quite a long time in teaching. Yes, yes. I, that's interesting. I, um, as an art educator, you're an art educator mm -hmm. too. That of her ties into art history. I get the feeling that you know she treasures l learning education. from the past, education from the past, mm -hmm. and also treasures teaching on towards the future because there's a storytelling mm -hmm. element in a lot of her work. And one of the things I uh, forgot to mention that when I was at Art High, mm -hmm. I think at the time I, I don't know if I was still in the classroom or an administrator, mm -hmm. but Emma came to speak to our students, yeah. and it was a great experience. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Wow. Now, all the work in the show is, is fabric except for one piece. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. Has she always worked in fabric with, with painting? Cause no. Because I know her as a design, mm -hmm. more of a printmaking design. Yes, yeah, she, she used to work with paper. Mm -hmm. She worked on paper, and then when she went large scale, that's when she started working on the unstretched canvas, mm -hmm. and then started when she got into textile and printing, mm -hmm. she started incorporating that into her pieces. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But you can see that she has been a painter and yes. still is a painter. Oh yeah, those are painter, painter. very painterly images yes. but combined on top mm -hmm. of the, the fabric work. Um, there's also, a, a, there are components of this exhibition mm -hmm. that will be happening. There's a workshop, you can tell us about the workshop. Okay, the <laughs> workshop actually was this past Sunday oh, okay. and it was presented by a woman whose name is Bianca Monet. Mm -hmm. She has an interesting background. She came from California to Jersey, and she started working at City Without Walls. Mm -hmm. And after working with City Without Walls, she also worked at the Studio Museum in Harlem. When she was at City Without Walls, they had an exhibit uh, which featured the Newark School. Mm -hmm. And it was art that more or less grew out of the work of Lisa Washington, Willie mm -hmm. Cole, mm -hmm. who used various items they collected in their arts. Mm -hmm. So this show was about that. Mm -hmm. But it did not include the older people who had 
to establish this so-called Newark School. Mm -hmm. And Bianca said, while she was helping to set this up at City Without Walls, she got a lot of criticism mm -hmm. from artists who said, you're talking about the Newark School. You didn't include Willie Cole. Mm -hmm. You didn't include Visa Washington. You didn't include Gladys mm -hmm. Flower. Mm -hmm. And that piqued her interest. Mm -hmm. Like, who are these people that I don't know about? And that's when she started asking questions, mm -hmm. and it got the idea to do an oral history mm -hmm. of the black artists in Newark. And she did go around and interview various artists, Gladys Gower. She actually came out to the studio. She came to my studio. Mm -hmm. She asked questions and interviewed quite a few of the artists. And the reason it tied in with Emma Amos is because Emma had her start mm -hmm. in Newark also. Mm -hmm. And many of the artists she interviewed had a start in Newark, still have a connection to Newark, mm -hmm. even though they're now in West Orange, Maplewood, South Orange, mm -hmm. what have you. Got it. So at the workshop, she showed some of the interviews. She showed some of their work. She actually got some input from Facebook mm -hmm. asking the, her followers what they would like the, uh, the artist to answer. So it was a very interesting workshop. We had a nice turnout. And uh, it was, we were able to do it because of the Springfield Avenue, and I don't have the whole title, that gave a grant to businesses and organizations on Springfield Avenue that had a Black History Month e event. So they funded this event by mm -hmm. giving us the uh, $100 grant. Oh, nice. Very nice. Once you're hit by a train, this is the size of bag that we'll use to collect what's left of you on the tracks. It was a horrible tragedy that, that could have been averted if we had just stayed off the tracks. I don't want to have to be the one that has to go tell your parents that you're dead. Make the right choice. Stay off the tracks. Hi, welcome back to Meet the Artists. I'm Sarah Petrozello, uh, South Orange artist and resident, and I'm interviewing Nettie Thomas, who is a board member at 1978 Maplewood Arts Center, about this month's Black History Month show featuring Emma Amos. Um, how, how did you get Emma Amos? <laughs> Tell the background story. Uh, one of the things that, was, um, that became apparent when we were talking to uh, uh, Monica, um, I'm sorry, Bianca Monet mm -hmm. was the fact that many of the artists during that time period when Willie Coles was working and Gladys Gower and Visa Washington, we all supported one another. Yeah. It was a small group, but whenever anyone had a show, we all were there. Mm -hmm. So that way we had these connections. Mm -hmm. And by knowing Ben Jones, knowing Willie Cole, mm -hmm. and knowing people who knew Emma, mm -hmm. I could s reach out to her. Mm -hmm. And these were people she knew and respected. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it, it gave some legitimacy mm -hmm. to our shows. Yeah. And Ben Jones and Bisa Washington were our first. Mm -hmm. And then by using that as sort of a uh, introduction, mm -hmm. I got other artists to agree. Camille Billups was one of our artists. Mm -hmm. I knew that she was very good friends with Emma. Mm -hmm. I called Camille and asked, can I have Emma's at, uh, phone number? Do you think she would object? Mm -hmm. And Camille says, why would she? Mm -hmm. And so I called Emma and we started the conversation about this show. But it was all through artists knowing other artists. Yeah. And fortunately, many of the artists that I started with have gone on to be included in major museums like Willie Cole and Ben Jones. Exactly. So that gives us a nice connection. That, <laughs> just going back to the, the art scene in York must have been amazing. Oh, it was. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was fantastic. And the reason it was something good that grew out of something that was not so good. Yeah. Prior to the riots, mm -hmm. there was not a recognition 
of the art scene. Mm -hmm. But after the riots, an attempt to ameliorate conditions mm -hmm. and bring people together, mm -hmm. they did reach out to artists. There were places like uh, New Jersey Bell, different corporations, uh, the Newark Museum. Mm -hmm. They were reaching out to these artists. So it was an exciting time. You were actually looked for. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we all got together. I mean, the Port Authority of New, um, New York and New Jersey yeah. had shows, solo shows for different artists. Wow. So it was exciting. It's exciting. Wow. <laughs> it and was something good that came out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I'm thinking back on this, the Black History Month shows, these are, have all, at 1978, have all been really fantastic solo shows with a really, you know, strong artwork. It's been really exciting to see. Um, yeah, but we, uh, t a couple of years ago with the Chicago Booker, yes. that's a, that was a different um, connection, I'm yeah. guessing. But well, um, actually, the first connection was um, I was in attendance at Montclair Museum, mm -hmm. where they were doing a feature on different black artists. Mm -hmm. uh, the black artist they were featuring was Willie Cole. Mm -hmm. Ben Jones and Visa Washington were in the audience. Mm -hmm. So I asked them, how would you like to do a show, Ben and Visa, in 1978? Mm -hmm. But it's because we were there to support Willie, mm -hmm. and then when I saw the two of them together, Visa Washington, by the way, was Ben Jones' student mm -hmm. when he was a professor at Jer New Jersey City University. So it was a nice coming together. And Shakaya Booker was a younger uh, person coming up. Mm -hmm. and. Um, she started in Newark, but she ended up in East Orange and, you know, and then New York. Mm -hmm. But uh, she still has her ties to Newark also. Yeah, that brings up an interesting thing with the, the teacher and student, this mm -hmm. idea of um, mentorship, mentoring, uh -huh. and also, um, you know, helping out, you know, because yeah. it's the art work world's not easy when they put you out of art school. <laughs> no one gives you an instruction booklet of what to do or mm -hmm. how to, you know, you're used to the structure of art school. So it's nice to hear that there's a community and yes. that there's a structure um, built up to help other artists get into shows. Because one of my very first, I think, important shows came through Ben Jones. Mm -hmm. He was asked to get two other artists to exhibit with him in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. And Ben called me. So it's that kind of a, you know, support of one another that grows. Yeah. And like Bisa being Ben's student, you know, mm -hmm. and I think we had a show, uh, what did it go, Seeing Between the Lines. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry Walker was in the show. Mm -hmm. He was my former student. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and as um, Jackson, Leno Chan, uh, Emma's former student, mm -hmm. said, you keep the lines of communication open because you establish a, um, uh, a, a connection mm -hmm. that goes beyond just talking about your art. Because yeah. he, he is very close to Emma. Yeah. And Larry and I have been friends ever since he was my student in high school. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so it, you know, it does um, develop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, none of the artists look like their work is the same. You know, like in the traditional yeah. European model, that uh -huh. if the, there's an, uh, a teacher or a master artist, all the, their apprentices, their work looks uh -huh. the same They're, as the master. This, everyone is so distinct. I mean, each artist is yeah. so distinctly developed. So it feels as though the support is, is much more of a, a networking kind yeah. of support and just good. and encouraging them to develop what they do mm -hmm. uh, best you know yeah. and it doesn't have to be what you do yeah. in fact one of the criticisms my uh, friend who's the principal of art I made of a certain teacher who was a very fine artist every piece of student work looked like hers yeah. And that's not good. <laughs> no. no, you want to encourage this growth and development, but not, you know, formulate them in your own image. Yeah, right. I, I get that. That's ex excellent. Um, back to the Emma Amos show, I know, and, you know, the sense of history, mm -hmm. et cetera, coming into it. Um, some other pieces that stood out to me, there, there's a, a triptych piece with three hanging yes. together. Uh, tapestries. Mm -hmm. I don't recall the name of it, but there's um, and then there's another large the flat print piece. 
Yeah, she calls that one my mothers, my sisters. Mm -hmm. And they were various women mm -hmm. who were influencing, you know, within her life. Mm -hmm. In fact, this has been a very busy month for Emma. Mm -hmm. She had four shows going at the same time. Oh, wow. So we were really honored that 1978 was one of the shows. Because the other three, well, one was at Montclair, mm -hmm. and uh, two in New York, mm -hmm. and one in Maplewood. Uh, one of the shows, she has a series of watercolors of very well-known women. Mm -hmm. She calls it the gift mm -hmm. because she wanted to preserve these images as a gift to her daughter, mm -hmm. to know about these very influential women. Mm -hmm. and, it's this, and the women actually came and sat for her while she painted them. So she painted Camille Phillips, she painted Elizabeth Catlett, mm -hmm. uh, Isadora oh. Duncan, and this series was being shown last month. Yeah. Oh. And another thing I thought was very interesting, this series is only being offered for sale to museums and institutions. Oh, so not to the public. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So we're out of the picture. Gotcha. Couldn't afford it anyway. Gotcha. Wow. Well, I'm glad she did that because Elizabeth Catlett, of course, yes. passed this past uh -huh. year, which is That's right. at, what, 99? Mm -hmm. She's 99. Yeah, fantastic printmaker mm -hmm. and artist. Um, let me think of the other pieces in the show. Uh, we talked about the Paul Robeson. Oh, the first one in the, when you come in the gallery, the first one on the left, it's much more pieced together. William Kunstler. Yeah. Uh, William Kunstler was a lawyer who defended many black men during the civil rights era. Uh, a, white art, a white lawyer, and he was successful in defending them and proving their innocence. So here again, you have Emma's sense of educating mm -hmm. and history. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things she did say when we were talking about the show, mm -hmm. she wanted people to not only look, but to learn. Mm -hmm. So that's how we came up with the title, Looking, Learning, oh, and Living. Great, okay, <laughs> that's the title, okay. Uh, but it's interesting because they don't feel like didactic pieces. No, you no, don't no. feel like um, an idea or she's trying to preach something no, to you, you, don't get you that. feel more like these are homages, yes. you know, each of these individual pieces is an homage, mm -hmm. uh, which, interesting, the far corner, the one on red velvet, yes. was that curly? <laughs> What's that? Topsy curly. Topsy curly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are you familiar with Topsy Curly? I am not familiar with Topsy Curly, <laughs> oh. so obviously I have a okay. story here. <laughs> Topsy Curly is a figurine that was very popular in the South. Oh, okay. That's why I asked, were you familiar? No. And it was a doll where she had a large hoop skirt. Mm -hmm. And when you flipped it over, you had another doll on the other side. So one doll was white, you flipped it over, the other doll was black. Oh. That was Topsy Curly. Uh, in yeah. fact, uh, Evelyn, the co-curator of the mm. show, she did some research, and the um, some of the original dolls back in the 1980s mm -hmm. were selling for 4500 So if you have one today, it's worth a lot of money, but that's Topsy Curly. Yeah, it looked familiar <laughs> to me, but I, had, I wasn't sure what it was, yeah. and it's going back to technique it's mm -hmm. printed on red velvet yes and that orange is just mm -hmm. such a beautiful like it takes a moment to really see what's happening right. with the colors that's a beautiful piece and um, the doll is called topsy turvy oh. but since she did the painting she calls it topsy curly yeah mm -hmm. okay and oh. that was one of her favorites and the interesting thing about that the one in the gallery if i remember correctly it has the white doll on top. Mm. She has another one where it's reversed. Mm -hmm. The exact same painting, but reversed. She indicated that she wanted to show both of them. Mm -hmm. Her assistant told me she always shows both of them together. Mm -hmm. But we could not afford the insurance because they're very high priced yeah. to have both of them together. <laughs> so we had to get permission to show only one little secret about getting shows together. There's insurance involved yes. with some of these more expensive artworks right. because you, you know, can't have anything happen to them, especially with these more high-end shows. That's true. Well, um, any last thoughts on the Emma Amos show? This has been a oh, beautiful just show. Oh, just come see the show. It's a beautiful show. You will enjoy the show. And it's going to be up until March 24th. March 24th. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And yeah, There's a collage workshop. And there that? will be a collage workshop with the uh, 
Ellie Greenfield and Evelyn Graves. Okay, great. So that's another opportunity to come out and see the show. Thank you, Maddie. It's been oh, great having you. Maddie it's Thomas. nice being here. Thank you very much for joining us on Meet the Artist.